May we also invite our representatives from the Philippine Center of Islam and Democracy and the Rajaratnam School of International Studies to present to us the conference highlights from day one and our overview for day two. Please will see in the stage area as well. Thank you. Good morning and Mahuhai, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. We hope you are well rested as we welcome you to day two of the ASEAN Conference on Peace and the Prevention of Violent Extremism in Southeast Asia. Again, our thanks to our partners, International Alert, the Women and Gender Institute of Miriam College, the Global Partnership for the Prevention of Armed Conflict Initiatives for International Dialogue, the University of the Philippines, the Women's Alliance for Security Leadership, and the National Commission on Muslim Filipinos from the NCR Regional Office. This conference is also made possible through the support of the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade of the Australian Government Agency for International Development Cooperation, the United Nations Development Program, the Government of Switzerland, the Government of the Netherlands, Agencia Española de Cooperación Internacional El Desarrollo, the delegation of the European Union to the Philippines, UN Women, and to the private sector, San Miguel Corporation. Once again, may we invite our representatives from the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy and the Rajaratnam School of International Studies to present to us the conference highlights from day one and our overview for day two. We're also calling on the president of the Philippine Center for Islam and Democracy, Ms. Amina Rasul Bernardo. Also, we are requesting Mr. Kumar Ramakrishna to join us at the stage area. Thank you. run through the key uh, takeaways from yesterday's sessions, which we will we'll agree was very uh, rich. So I'll, please bear with me, I'll fair bit to go through. Our keynote speaker, former Philippine President Ramos, set a tone for our forum yesterday by emphasizing the need to counter violent extremism the ASEAN way. In particular, he recalled that as a young officer fighting the Hakbala Hubs, President Maksai Sai had said that the armed forces must use all-out force with the right hand and use all-out friendship with the left hand. In other words, a balance between the hard and soft approach was needed. Ms. Amina Rasul of PCID explained that one of the goals of this conference 
to recap is to uh, assure all of us, all communities, that in fact what happened here can happen elsewhere and violent extremism is a general pro problem that applies to everyone. She further explained that the Maravi siege is not just a Philippines problem, but a regional one. And she pointed out that ASEAN should listen and work with civil society to come up with national and regional action plans, which is what we'll be doing this afternoon. Meanwhile, Ambassador Delia Albert explained that ASEAN takes a preventive approach to violent extremism. She stressed that we should recognize the potential contributions of relevant contributors and use a more coordinated and systematic approach under the ASEAN framework. Ambassador Ong King Yong from RSIS asserted that whatever happens in our region in terms of terrorism will affect the wider world and vice versa. He called for the strengthening of the ASEAN community against emerging threats because any foothold of ISIS in the region would have a radicalization impact on many ASEAN communities. National Security Advisor Hermogenes Esperon for his part explained that the Marabi siege has dragged on four months now because of the difficult nature of the terrain but more importantly because the government was trying to protect mosques, schools and civilians. And he noted that the conflict has taken a heavy toll on human life, with many killed by the extremists and more than 200,000 displaced by the conflict. He, con he added that the government hopes to end the conflict very soon, so that reconstruction can begin and Marabi can rise to the ashes. He pointed out that battle is ultimately for the hearts and minds of the people, and the government has promoted inclusivity and unity uh, in Marawi, Mindanao, Philippines, and ASEAN. Meanwhile, Philippine Presidential Peace Advisor Secretary Jesus Dureza highlighted the fact that many conference participants from the conflict areas of Tawi Tawi, Sulu, Maguindanao, and Lanao were here, and he urged all of us to listen to the sharing of their experiences, and especially the people from the conflict zone. He urged conference organizers and participants to allow these experiences to inform national policy as well as ASEAN's plan to counter violent extremism. And he also urged various governments in ASEAN to address the core drivers of conflict, including social injustice, marginalization, and oppression. We had two plenary sessions yesterday. The first panel on the Islamic State and Transnational Terrorism in Southeast Asia involved uh, several uh, scholars and practitioners. Under Secretary Catalino Kui, the ASEAN Minister on Transnational Crime, who is also Acting Secretary of the Philippines Department of Interior and Local Government, discussed the department's strategy to counter violent extremism using a whole-of-government approach. This basically calls for a multi-stakeholder view that includes government, civil society, academia, and non-state uh, elements as well, civil society. In particular, he highlighted the role of the Department of Education and the Technical Education and Skills Development Authority in providing education and livelihood skills essential for preventing radicalization, especially in poor communities. The UN Resident Coordinator for the Philippines, Mr. Ola Almgren, referred to violent extremism as a global challenge and, a challenge and a unique product of our time. But he pointed out how inspiring responses from the Philippine communities in the face of such extremist threats and terrorism must also be captured as this was important too, and this would be inspiring as we continue this battle. Mr. Samuel Gronhardt, who is with the Attorney General's Department, CBE Centre in Australia, discussed Australia's efforts to counter violent extremism. <coughs> he cited what he calls the constantly shifting threat environment in the region, and that the new terrorism is transnational by nature, so the responses must also be transnational. He said that governments need to address the underlying conditions that fuel violent extremism, which is a Team, which was repeated yesterday. Dr. Henny Cueva Pateta of UN Women discussed violent extremism from a gender perspective, focusing on how terrorism uses gender stereotypes in its recruitment and spreading its message around the globe. She noted that extremists are very good at tailoring their message for women depending on the region, and she also emphasized that in the world of terrorism, women are often affected as victims, sympathizers, or as perpetrators. As such, women cannot be ignored and crafting a plan to prevent violent extremism. Suggest, she suggested that groups involved in crafting such a plan need to understand how terrorists are manipulating gender roles in their strategy and how women can be more engaged in the whole process of fighting violent extremism. Women must be empowered. Ms. Jenny Wahid, Director of Wahid Institute in Indonesia, presented data based on their study of violent extremism in Indonesia. 
she noted that they found out that terrorists are now receiving funding, not just from the local areas, but internationally as well. The good news is, however, is that the study revealed that the majority of Indonesian Muslims reject radicalism. In her presentation, she discussed the factors that led to radicalization, namely, number one, a sense of alienation and deprivation, number two, intolerance, number three, support for radical groups, number four, sermon materials containing hateful messages and encouraging violence. She characterized extremists as basically male and young, having a tendency to understand religion in a literal way, having exposure to religious information with messages of suspicion and hatred, and finally believing in the denial, in the denial of rights of people they dislike. Prof. Rohan Kudaratna of RSIS argued that we must note that in our region, we have shifted from an Al-Qaeda-centric to an ISIS-centric threat scape. He noted that many Philippine groups, terrorist groups, groups have pledged allegiance to ISIS. He explained that what makes ISIS effective is their presence not only in physical space, but increasingly in cyberspace as well. He urged participants to focus resources and efforts on 80% prevention and 20% rehabilitation in the fields of education, religion and culture. Quickly moving on to the second plenary, Asu Daniel Ahmed from Sirsat Malaysia noted that while ISIS is indeed losing ground in the Middle East, they are prepared for the long haul since they view their struggle as intergenerational. And he noted that ISIS was effective in using social media to push out the extremist narratives. Daniel argued that one of the problems we face in countering ISIS messaging in social media is what he called a symmetry of passion. Basically, those who work towards countering violent extremists often find it hard to match the passion of those pumping out the extremist messages. He suggested making use of youth, young people's ideas to harness their creativity, to come up with messages that will resonate with other young people if we are to succeed. Mr. Noor Huda Ismail of the Indonesian Institute for International Peace Building discussed the use of film, the power of film, to create meaningful conversations on countering violent extremism. He said we needed conversations about violent extremism and how to prevent it. We need to share stories through films so that we can learn from one another. He basically, he wanted to open a dialogue and public discourse about social media as a tool to recruit youngsters in order to join, to prevent uh, uh, people joining medical groups. Dr. Aurora Idios, an expert for women at the ASEAN Commission on the Promotion and Protection for the Rights of Women and Children, reported that empowering women towards peace building and countering violent extremism is very important as it makes a key uh, investment in the overall efforts to prevent violent extremism and counter it. Don Patan, founding member of the Patani Forum in Thailand, shared experiences in southern Thailand, uh, which is 80% Muslim Malay. He explained that the conflict is not a Buddhist versus Muslim conflict, but it's a result of first the Thai government's historical assimilation policies that did not sufficiently address the political and cultural validity of the Malay Muslim identity in the South. And secondly, the rather heavy-handed approach when dealing with the insurgency. Ultimately, he argued that the Thai state must incorporate itself into its national narrative. Dr. Shashi Jayakuma. Moving on to the uh, breakout sessions, in the women's breakout session, what was discussed was the varying roles of women in jihad and how, at present, Women seem to have been effectively recruited by ISIS in Southeast Asian countries such as Indonesia, Hong Kong and Malaysia, focusing especially on migrant workers in this region. Women also played a large role in the dissemination of ideology through internet-based based platforms like Telegram. In the breakout session, there was consensus that there is no adequate evidence to generate a shared analysis or understanding of violent extremism and that there are numerous gaps in the academic and investigative research that needs to be filled to enable a deeper understanding of the causes and costs of violent extremism. Furthermore, the youth need more platforms to voice out their views on violent extremism. There was also a call for a community of practice, again a theme which has been mentioned, involving not just academics but practitioners to better understand radicalization processes. There was a suggestion that the effectiveness and policy impact of academic research could be sharpened by using KPIs as tools of assessment of policy.